Boys, today we're going over the flechette, and I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about this weapon and how to master it. Before we get into it, shout out to these guys. Left some comments on some of my previous videos, and also make sure you're subscribed to the channel because a bunch of you are not subscribed, and it helps me out so much. Now, without further ado, let's get right into it. So the ASP flechette is a weapon that you unlock at level 12 for the Osiris faction. If we go over to the Osiris market, and we go over here, and we go to weapons, we'll see that the flechette is the fourth weapon that we unlock. This gun is a really, really solid price point point because again it's one of the better smgs in the game this thing starts off with nine damage a 20 magazine size and 27 penetration i'm gonna help you put some attachments on this weapon that make it so much better than it already is but let's go into the attachments and see what this gun needs to be at its peak performance if we go over to the gear printer you're gonna need three main attachments for this weapon and these are super super easy to craft again it depends where you are in the game but these three are a must for me and for you so first First things first is the holographic sight. I think the iron sights are just a little bit too close quarters. They're just too thin down. And that's why I like to get the holographic sight, which opens up such a larger area for you to be able to see the enemy and see what's going on around you. The second attachment that you just need to have is a small suppressor. Currently, I can't craft any, but I have a crap ton of small suppressors just because I craft so many suppressors all the time and pistons are fairly easy to find. But besides that, small suppressors are a must that you need to craft. I'll show you my build with the small suppressor in a second but a small suppressor is gonna make it so people don't hear you as much and again this gun sounds identical to a manticore that's suppressed so if you're gonna suppress as well people can't tell the difference between if it's a suppressed manticore or if it's a suppressed flechette so that may help or hurt you in some situations the third attachment that you're gonna need to make this gun super super viable is the light extended just because this attachment is gonna add the bullets that you need to win your gunfight since the flechette only starts with 20 bullets in a mag and the gun shoots very very quickly so those bullets go by super super fast so you're going to want to elongate that magazine as much as possible so that's why you're going to need a light extended again if you can't make a purple use a blue if you don't have a blue use a green use whatever you have to your advantage as long as you have some sort of extended mag on this flechette a purple is obviously the best thing you could get and it's the one you should have but if you can't use it use something else but now for the build on the flechette again you're only going to need the holographic sight to craft you're only going to need the purple magazine to craft again use whatever you have and you're going to need to have that blue suppressor the small suppressor for this weapon as you see I still have three extra but again these are the only three attachments that you need to make the gun viable these are the only three attachments you're gonna need to craft when you have the weapon for the other attachments I just go to the quick shop and I buy them so the first attachment you're gonna want to buy that's a white attachment is the standard stock because it reduces the recoil when firing this weapon the next one is gonna be the white foregrip as it also reduces the recoil when firing and that's a big big dub for this weapon this next attachment is up to you if you want to rock it but it is a tactical light. Sometimes you need a flashlight in some situations. It doesn't hurt the gun out in any way. Put it on if you want it. Don't put it on if you don't. I don't have an ammo converter on this weapon, but if you have one, again, more damage is always good damage. So stick one on if you want to rock one. Again, if you have one, use it. Why not? It gives you a better chance to kill more people. And for the last attachment, I have a tactical rear grip just because this makes it so you aim down sights quicker. And when you're using an SMG, time to kill is going to be the most important thing. So you're going to have to aim down sights, get your sights zoned in, and really get your aim down on an enemy. But that's going to be the build for the flechette. And now let's go into the loadout that I rock with the flechette. So this is the best loadout that I have for the flechette. I rock a flechette and a sniper just because the sniper is one of the better guns in the game. And if you can start off a fight with good damage and push in with your flechette, you're going to be much more likely to win that gunfight. So for the flechette, I bring a thousand bullets because again, if I'm fighting marauders, if I'm fighting a ton of people, I want to have more ammo than less. Ammo is cheap. So why not buy a good amount of it? For sniper, I bring 50 bullets just because I'm probably not going to even use 25 of them. I just want to bring them just in case. And I also bring again two combat stims and one green stim just because if I get in a fight, I use the blue stims. And if I get in a fight against marauders, striders, rattlers, who knows, I use the green stim. And I also bring a blue armor just because I want to have more of a chance in winning these gunfights. But this is the main loadout I rock for the flechette. And now that we know the best things to rock with and for the flechette, let's go over the recoil. So for the recoil, we're going to do two different tests. One test with all of the attachments and the second test with all of the attachments off besides the extended mag the holographic sight and the suppressor because none of these have any effect on the recoil so that's why we're going to take the white attachments off because those are going to be our big recoil reducers but let's see how this recoil does on this weapon so we're going to start off in the same spot for all of the tests and let's start engaging we go up to the right and to the left this is one of those guns that has a recoil pattern that goes side to side so it's not like the advocate which goes straight up and to the right it's not like the manticore which is straight to the left this is going to be one of those guns that has two different directions that you're going to have to control 
control. Let's see that one more time and really understand what we have to do in order to succeed with this weapon. So let's take it step by step. Once we start shooting, we go straight up for a little bit. So again, we go straight up just a little bit in the beginning and now we start to gauge to the right a little bit. So we go to the right and then a little bit of an angle up and then we start to merge to the left. So again, it looks like we're forming a sort of question mark type symbol. And again, let's look over that one more time. So we start shooting and we're going to go up right away. We're going to go to the right and then we're going to go to the left. So again, it looks like a question mark. So again, when you're trying to control the recoil patterns, you have to do the exact opposite of what you're going to do with this. So if the red marker right here is going to be the recoil pattern, we have to do the exact opposite. So if it goes up, we go down. If it goes a little bit to the right, we're going to go a little bit to the left. And if it goes a little bit of a curvature to the left, we're going to go a little bit of a curvature to the right. And that's exactly what we're going to have to do when we're holding the mouse. And we're going to have to identify that we're going to have to go down a little left and a little right to really control the recoil. So in my opinion, the recoil with the attachments on is not the worst. Now we're going to take all the white attachments off and really see what we have to do. So now we're aiming in at the same exact spot. And let's see very quickly, we go up to the right and to the left. And as we see, there's only one big difference in this. And that's when you start shooting, the bullets are much more spread apart. So let's see it one more time and see what I'm talking about. Because as we see, we go up and the bullets are just spaced a little higher. So in the beginning of the recoil pattern, when you're trying to control it, we're going to have to go up a little bit higher, but the pattern stays exactly the same. The only difference is that you're going to have to pull down a little bit harder in the beginning. So if this is the recoil pattern right here, a little bit more extended on the left hand side, we're going to have to go again, the exact opposite. So if it goes straight up, we're going to have to go straight down for a little bit longer this time. If it goes a little bit to the right, we're going to go a little bit to the left and then a wrap around to the left is a wrap around to the right. So again, you're going to have to follow this with your mouse, but without the attachments, you're going to have to pull a little bit harder in certain directions. This recoil is not too hard to control and you should be working on your recoil when you're fighting every single mob in the area. If you're shooting a strider, focus on recoil. If you're shooting a rattler, focus on recoil. If you're shooting a marauder, focus on recoil. Go from ranges, focus and practice all game because there's so many different creatures to shoot at all game. But now that we actually know how to control the recoil, we know the best attachments, you know the best loadout. Let's go over some PvP situations and see how I handle myself with this gun. So real quick, before we get into the PvP, I just want to show you guys how this thing stacks up against a marauder. Because again, if you're using this gun with a 30 round mag, you're going to want it to be useful against some creatures. And as we see, we're killing some heavy striders, not too much difficulty, but a marauder is going to be one of the biggest tests for this weapon. Because again, it's not like we have a shatter gun. It's not like we can two pump them. We have to hit some really good shots on them. So we see here a marauder in the distance. I managed to control my recoil pretty well. And I shred kind of almost half of his health. Once he gets close and he opens his mouth, that's when I start to get really good damage in. And this gun is honestly a really solid option for killing marauders because you can get enough damage in where he doesn't shoot at you or swipe at you. You just have to get enough damage to make it so it cancels any of his animations for his attacks. So again, this is just a quick explanation that you can use it against marauders. You can honestly three clip it if you hit the mouth at the right angle, maybe even two clip it. But again, let's get right into the PvP. So this first gunfight, I'm just going to explain how the extended man kind of saved me in this situation. So as we see in the bottom right of the screen, I have 30 bullets in a completely full bag. And as we see, we're just kind of chilling. We're walking. We're shooting some creatures as we go along. We see some striders lay into them a little bit, get some shots off. And as we see, we're left with 21 bullets. Again, the extended mag adds 10 bullets to your weapon. So if I didn't have an extended mag, I'd be at 11 bullets right now. And you'll see how that takes into account in this gunfight. So we're moving up fairly slowly, not really looking around, just chilling. I was vibing with chat. And all of a sudden, in the top left of our screen, we see a little Timmy right here in the corner. He has the high ground on me. He has the height. Again, he's in a very, very good spot to rip and lay into me. And this was going to be a very tough fight if I had to fight it. So we're going and I just start getting absolutely lasered. So now we got to kind of outwork him. He jumps up. He gets some good shots on me. I have to reload to get this kill. And I just start spraying and praying. And I managed to get the kill with six bullets left in my magazine. So again, so again, in the first 21 bullets, if I didn't have the extended mag, I wouldn't have anywhere near the right amount of bullets to kill the guy. And also when I finally kill him, I ended with three bullets. So that just means that I was completely out of luck. If I didn't have an extended mag, I would have been more than dead because he would have had time to shoot me a little more since my health was so low. If I didn't have an extended mag in that fight, I would lose it. Let's go over that fight one more time, just in live action, just to see what really unfolded because that was a lot to unpack. So I get shredded. I get some not good shots on him. I kind of move around, try to maneuver, see what I can do. I get some good shots, reload. And again, I end the fight with nearly no bullets left on my mag and I did what I had to do. So right here is another gunfight. This is a fairly close range gunfight. I have the height of my opponent and I just have to hit every bullet. And since I trained my recoil, I've been working on it for a little bit. You'll see how I hit my shots and fight this. Since it's a really, really simple gunfight, I know he's going to move across. He's running left. So I have to hit every shot because if he gets outside those gates, he's going to be practically gone. So I have to make sure I kill him beforehand. So I get some really good shots off. 
off on him and I just managed to shred him again. Let's see that just one more time and see how well I hit my shots because if you understand the recoil, this gun will be nasty for you. I hit almost every single shot. I still had 13 bullets to work with and if I didn't have an extended mag, I'd have three bullets to work with. Bring an extended mag and make sure you're hitting all your shots. Practice your recoil at all times. This gun is a super solid option for you. But right here is going to be our third gunfight. GG's to this guy because this guy, me and him were talking on void and we wanted to fight. He's like, all right, let's fight in five seconds. So we have a fight going on. He doesn't have too good of armor. I have pretty good armor and a flechette. So at this range with the flechette, I'm probably just going to tickle him. But since I hit a good amount of shots, he said he was hurt. So I decided to push up and really try to hit as many shots as possible. I want to close the distance on my enemies when I'm using this weapon, just because it is an SMG and I don't want to shoot him from too far because he has an AR-55. And since I have to get close, I have to get some good damage on him and close down the gap. Right here, I heard him healing behind this rock. So I decided to push up. I see him above. I get some really, really good shots on him. That headshot must have hurt. So I decided to push, hit him a little bit more. And now I was kind of playing with him. I'll be honest, I felt pretty bad. And I just shot him one time to finish him off. But in this gunfight, it was a little bit out of my range. That's why I decided once I got good damage, I played off of it. I pushed up. I made sure to push up a good amount because again, with an SMG, you can't play from too far away. So then I just finished him off and really made sure to close down that gunfight and win. But boys, that's going to be it for the video. Again, make sure you're subscribed to the channel and you're liking the videos and hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Adios.